Hi. I would like to share with you some selections from Linda Goodman's Love Signs. This was published in 1978, and um, I've got my first edition copy here. I wish I had the dust jacket, but I don't. I've noticed there's not a lot of um, excerpts or um, any kind of audiobook available for this, and I know how uh, reading is tough for a lot of us in the uh, age of digital content that's so overwhelming. Um, I just wanted to put this out there for people who are seeking um, insights into the cyclical nature of the zodiac. I feel like Linda's description here in the beginning of the book, uh, her the portion entitled The Twelve Mysteries of Love is particularly important. And um, some of it may seem a bit dated, um, but I think it's actually still very relevant. If you just look past some of the gendered language that uh, in this modern age people have the tendency to want to throw out, but uh, baby with the bathwater and all that. Let's let's dig in. <clears throat> okay, so starting here on page fourteen. Love is man's and woman's deepest need. It's not the threat of illness or poverty that crushes the human spirit, but the fear that there is no one who truly cares and no one who really understands. We all reach desperately for love, no matter how healthy, wealthy, or wise we may be, because the alternative is loneliness. And so love is sought both in heaven and in hell, by both saints and sinners wherever the search may take them, and it takes them to some strange places in the Aquarian age, through the maze of the sexual revolution. And a quote here, say, what is this hang-up about sex? All those people who go to pornographic films and the ones who won't. <laughs> she has a lot of quotes. <laughs> the swingers and the idealists, the Puritans and prostitutes, the frigid and the promiscuous, the male chauvinists and the women's liberators, whether, they're, whether they read Browning or Playboy, whether they watch Walt Disney movies or the latest erotica from Sweden, are all looking for the same thing. No matter which road they travel on their pursuit of happiness, the inner need that drives them on is love. Not to give it, not to receive it, but to share it, to love and be loved in return. Why is lasting mutual love so elusive? To reach a complete and permanent union with the other half, the twin soul? Man and woman must learn the lessons of the twelve sun signs. They must master the wisdom of these twelve mysteries of love before they can achieve a final perfect harmony between their mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual natures. As we make the trip around the astrological or karmic wheel of life, through the rebirth, under the influence of the various sun signs, sometimes progressing swiftly, sometimes lingering, many times returning to a certain sun sign experience to relearn old lessons. We evolve, each at his or her own speed. We are forced by our own superconscious selves to gradually perfect the positive qualities of all twelve sun signs and purge our natures of their negative qualities, so that we may each eventually become the refined gold of a totally evolved entity, worthy to join the other half, the twin self. In our longing for love, for our twin soul or soulmate, lies our latent metaphysical wisdom, the secret of life itself, esoteric truth. Every sun sign contains a strength that can be reversed into a weakness, and every sun sign contains a weakness that can be reversed into a strength, through the law of positive-negative polarity. What is Taurus stubbornness but Taurus patience turned upside down? What is Aries impulsiveness but the negative side of the ram's positive Mars courage? Will Leo choose to use the great pride and nobility of the Leonine solar birthright for the positive purpose of protecting the helpless, or for the negative purpose of becoming an arrogant tyrant over the defenseless? Will the sensible Cancerian caution be turned into lunar fears and phobias? Will Pisces' compassion and humility be reversed to the negative Neptune aspects of deception, introversion, and escape? 
The choice of our sun sign polarities is always ours to take. And if we make the wrong choice, we must relive that sun sign experience repeatedly until we master the positive strength of that sign. The Twelve Initiations of Love In each of the following experiences, man or woman is fully capable of giving and teaching others the first quality. But for the personality to learn the second quality is a struggle. When one's understanding of this second quality equals that of the first, he or she has then achieved mastery of a particular sun sign. The soul must pass more than once through the first six initiations of love as Aries, the infant, I am. To teach that love is innocence and to learn that love is trust. Taurus, the baby, I have. To teach that love is patience and learn that love is forgiveness. Gemini, the child, I think. To teach that love is awareness and learn that love is feeling. Cancer, the adolescent, I feel. To teach that love is devotion and learn that love is freedom. Leo, the teenager, I will. To teach that love is ecstasy and to learn that love is humility. Virgo, the adult. I analyze. To teach that love is pure and learn that love is fulfillment. After achieving emotional maturity in these first six stages of development, man and woman must then pass through love's final six initiations, more than once, to discover its deeper, deeper spiritual meaning in Libra, marriage, I balance, to teach that love is beauty and learn that love is harmony. Scorpio, sex, I desire. To teach that love is passion and learn that love is surrender. Sagittarius, knowledge, I see. To teach that love is honesty and learn that love is loyalty. Capricorn, experience, I use. To teach that love is wisdom and learn that love is unselfish. Aquarius, idealism, I know. To teach that love is tolerance and learn that love is oneness. Pisces, submission. I believe. To teach that love is compassion and learn that love is all. And so to realize at last that love is eternal. There is a deep and significant reason why the meditation upon the 12 mysteries of love contained here is so important to you and the one you love. The key is the number 12. There are 12 basic mineral salts used in homeopathy, the most helpful branches of all medicine. These 12 cell salts have a great power of influence have, I'm sorry, these 12 cell salts have a great power to influence a positive state of human health in each of their corresponding 12 sun signs, a fact comprehended only by homeopathic practitioners, not orthodox physicians, except a rare few of the latter. 
Minerals of Earth conform to the number 12, as do both the metric and Dewey Decimal systems. Diamonds, for instance, possess 12 sides or axes along which they must be cut to achieve brilliance. There were 12 governors of the Manichean system, 12 divisions in Solomon's temple, 12 labors of Hercules, 12 altars of St. James, 12 Greek gods, and so forth. Long before the 12 sons of Jacob founded the 12 tribes of Israel, the number 13 possessed a great mystical significance. As an example, there were 12 knights of the round table, with King Arthur making the 13th member. The ancient Egyptian king, god-king Osiris, was associated with 12 lesser kings, Osiris being their 13th member. Likewise, did the Aztec god King Quetzalcoatl have 12 followers, he being the 13th of the group? In Christianity, Gautama Buddhism, and Shiite Islam, there are also 12 followers, apostles or disciples, and one master. The 12 disciples represent the 12 sun sign stages of learning, and the master symbolizes the number 13 or the purity of the perfect blend of all the other twelve into one complete whole. As an example, each of the twelve apostles in the Christian Bible can be identified by esoteric astrologers with the sun sign quality embodied in that individual's particular attitude toward the teachings of Jesus. This interwoven Judeo-Christian Islamic religious truth is manifested in the mathematical harmony and beauty synchronicity of the horoscopic wheel. Spiritual ignorance or blindness causes the superstitious fear of the dread number 13. Hotel floors jump from 12 to 14 and few hostesses will invite 13 people for dinner. Yet the true meaning of this holy number is wisdom. If used for evil, it can bring great destruction but if used for good, it can bring great regeneration. Used in its negative sense, it symbolizes the master who is the blend of all 12 sun sign lessons, having become a fallen angel, like Lucifer. Used in its positive sense, it means exactly the opposite, an angel who remains steadfast to wield the power and wisdom everlasting tempered with justice and mercy, and above all else, love. Numerology is an inescapable part of astrology. The subject is too vast and complicated to be fully covered in love signs and will be discussed in detail in a forthcoming book. Meanwhile, however, the briefest mention of planetary numbers is necessary for a full comprehension of the twelve mysteries of love. Each sun sign harmonizes with and is governed by a particular planet or luminary, sun and moon, and each planet likewise harmonizes with and is governed by a particular number. For example, the sun, ruler of Leo, vibrates to the number 10 or 1, which it equals when added via the normal mathematical processes. The moon, ruler of Cancer, vibrates to the number 2. Jupiter, ruler of Sagittarius, vibrates to the number 3. Uranus, ruler of Aquarius, vibrates to the number 4. Mercury, ruler of Gemini and temporary ruler of Virgo, until Virgo's true ruling planet Vulcan is discovered and identified, vibrates to the number 5. Venus, ruler of Libra and temporary ruler of Taurus, until Panhorus is discovered as the true ruler of Taurus, vibrates to the number 6. Neptune, ruler of Pisces, vibrates to the number 7. Saturn, ruler of Capricorn, vibrates to the number 8. Mars, ruler of Aries, vibrates to the number 9. Each planet and luminary also vibrates to what is termed a higher octave number, but we'll leave a full explanation of this for the aforementioned forthcoming book. Star Signs <clears throat> You might have noticed the emission of a number that vibrates to Pluto, ruler of Scorpio, in this list. Many astrologers and students of numerology will tell you that Pluto vibrates to the number 9, sharing this number with Mars, ruler of Aries. This is not true. Pluto, like all the other planets, vibrates to its own personal number, distinctly and individually its own, sharing it with no other planet or luminary. Since we've already discovered the numbers 1 through 9 and 10 as Leo's sun vibration, bringing us back to 1 again, full circle, you may wonder how Pluto can possess its own number. You will see. First, it's important to realize that the Mars 9 vibration is the masculine vibration of the universe, representing and symbolizing the ultimate masculine principle in all of life and love. 
The Venus 6 vibration is the feminine vibration of the universe, representing and symbolizing the ultimate feminine principle in all of life and love. 6 and 9. 6 and 9. The feminine and masculine vibratory numbers, or 9 and 6, male and female, positive and negative, dark, light, polarity. Notice that when the feminine number of Venus, 6, is turned upside down, reversing its polarity, it becomes 9. Likewise, when the masculine number, Mars, 9, is turned upside down, reversing its polarity, it becomes 6. Man and woman, then, are inseparable. Each is an equal part of the other. The masculine feminine principles are totally interchangeable, yet one is always aiming in a direction reverse from the other. There are many more fascinating and revealing levels to the study of 6 and 9 in numerology, but we're only touching the subject briefly here. We'll discuss it in depth in a future book. Notice that both the 6 and 9, when the tail is removed, becomes the circle. The circle is the secret of the twin soul blending, the deepest mystery of the sun sign of Scorpio, and Scorpio's ruling planet, the awesome, powerful Pluto. For the number to which Pluto vibrates is zero, the circle. The circle represents eternity, for it symbolizes the serpent eating its own tail. From the masculine positive head of the serpent flows the male positive energy force into the feminine negative tail of the serpent. Simultaneously, from the feminine negative tail of the serpent flows the female negative energy force into the serpent's masculine positive head. This is the secret of Scorpio, the sun sign of sex, and this is the energy behind the great power of Scorpio's ruling planet, Pluto. Zero. The circle. Zero. The serpent eating its own tail. The symbol of eternity. For only when all polarities, male and female, youth and age, dark and light, night and day, thus feed the energy simultaneously into one another and blend their energies, rather than continue to oppose one another, can true power exist. Pluto's vibratory zero also contains the secret mystery of Christianity's Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Son, humans, of both sexes, is masculine energy. The Holy Ghost, Christ's Spirit, is feminine energy. When each flows into the other simultaneously instead of remaining in opposition, a third energy is created, which is both yet neither neutral and all-powerful, i.e. the Father, God. This third energy, composed of the masculine and feminine combined, flowing into each other and not in opposition, creates many miracles. The great power of divinity, the conception of a child, the conception of an idea, adding the I for love, adding the one, sorry, the L for love, this becomes an ideal. Idea becomes ideal with an L for love. The energy that powers spacecraft from other systems, solar systems. It is in no way an accident that kick who made the monumental discovery of the benzene ring structure which paved the way for the theoretical aspect of organic chemistry and that he said that he dreamed repeatedly of a snake eating its own tail before the concept occurred to him. Therefore, all the mysterious Pluto-Scorpio power comes from a subconscious knowledge of this zero principle that the perfect blend between masculine and feminine creates a third energy force which is both yet neither neutral and all-powerful because it does not oppose, but causes polarities to simultaneously blend and flow into each other. Another indication, another secret of Pluto's zero circle is that what happens when you add the zero to any other number, any banker or mathematics student can tell you that it increases the power of the number. Obviously, the sum of $1 grows larger as you add the zeros. Thus, $1 becomes 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 and so on. Zero then equals power. That's nice for all Scorpios to know, as long as they don't forget what causes the power, the serpent eating its own tail, eternity's secret. An important building block to the comprehension of the Twelve Mysteries of Love related to the secret of the circle is the following. You'll come across the term co-creators many times in this book. To the skeptical who find it difficult to image the Old Testament God with a mate of his own, I offer this scholarly source, although the faithful and the spiritually wide awake need no proof other than the instinctive knowledge from within regarding this or any concept of the truth of creation. The following quotation is from a painstaking translation of the Septuagint, the earliest known circa 250 BC version of the Old Testament, 
or standard Hebrew MSS date only from the Renaissance. The translation was published by the Falcon Wings Press in 1960 under the editorship of Dr. C. Muses from Proverbs 8.3-31 to 31, excerpts. For at the gates of the mighty she hath taken a seat, and at the entrance thereof chanteth her song. In the beginning, before the Lord made the earth, when he furnished the heavens, I was with him. And when he set apart his throne on the winds, when he set to the sea its bound, and the waters passed not the word of his mouth, I was harmonizing with him. I was the one in whom he delighted, and I was daily gladdened by his presence on all occasions. Ecclesiastical Christianity seated by the Hebrew Old Testament distortion of truth through the patriarch image has too long taught the falsehood that the Holy Trinity is entirely masculine. By such deception we have been deprived of a sublime and ennobling truth. But the unfolding of the Aquarian age foretold by all prophets of all religions will bring the light of the conscious restoration of the golden balance between the feminine and masculine energies of Earth. <clears throat> The golden balance is the eventual blending of all twin souls. Its concept lies ready to burst forth within all yearning, searching hearts. It's called by many names, yet its true name is the real self, as experienced through the union with one's own twin soul. And it begins with the recognition of the male-female truth hidden in the Holy Trinity in the symbol of eternity, the serpent eating its own tail. The secret knowledge given by the serpent to Eve, who passed it on to Adam, that this eating of the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge was later called original sin, reveals the des desperation of the dark forces to hide the light of truth by a polarity distortion channeled through the ancient patriarchs who feared losing the masculine superiority principle through sexual equality. But the Aquarian Age Daughters of Eve will at last bring the world to recognize that the term original sin is the big daddy of all religions, dogmas, super hypes. And the Aquarian Age Sons of Adam will this time be enlightened to Eve's wisdom. Not even the Church Fathers can stop the lightning of the predestined and foretold Uranian spiritual awakening, awakening of the new age of golden balance. Perhaps Adam couldn't handle the truth, but today's water bears can and will. Under the powerful Uranus vibes in the Aquarian microscope, all deception will be exposed for the hypocrisy it is, and this shall be called original innocence, the beginning of wisdom. When people all throughout the world enter into cooperation with these divine principles of the golden balance of male and female, the new age of Aquarius will finally manifest itself in all the splendor and magnificence of the reborn and wiser Atlantis. Not all the chauvinists and atomic and nuclear energy madmen combined can stop the Uranian tidal waves of truth. As man and woman evolve around the astrological karmic circle, absorbing the qualities of other sun signs into their own individualities, teaching some, learning from others, each has a spiritual obligation to retain the positive integrity of his or her own sun sign in this incarnation, and also to respect that right in others. The lion must have his dignity, as the crab must cling to security. The goat must honor tradition, as the twins must demand their freedom. Each must follow the Aquarian age adage to live and let live, to be yourself and realize that others must be themselves too. The first step toward comprehending love's ultimate meaning, toward finally being permitted to enjoy its absolute fulfillment, is to learn to tolerate instead of condemning the sun sign qualities different from our own. In exploring the interrelationships of the twelve sun signs through both their harmonious and their conflicting traits of character as they relate to our own, we should always try to remember that the final goal of each soul is to give and receive the lessons of each sun sign to and from the others met along the way. This journey is a kind of growing of the spirit from soul infancy through soul adulthood, middle age, old age, and death, then rebirth. The soul can be freed of this endless cycle of birth and death only when we learn to free the physical or dense body, also of death. A miracle I dare to predict will occur much sooner than we now believe. The problem such longevity would create in relation to the general world population, new births along with the conquering of death for centuries, etc., does have several solutions. But 
<clears throat> this is not the place to attempt to conceive of the possibilities. An in-depth discussion of such a future in the approaching new age must wait for my next book. The soul's symbolic journey through the twelve sun signs may be comprehended by imaging man and woman undergoing, with their minds and bodies, a matching journey. First, the soul enters the initial phase, similar to earthly birth, and advances through various further stages similar to earthly life, gaining spiritual experience from each, just as we gain mental and physical experience from a similar type journey of our dense bodies. The soul is born in the sign of Aries, the symbolic infant, as reflected through the sun's magnetic alchemy. And I will continue later with more videos and read the Aries through Pisces, all 12 love mysteries. Stay tuned. <laughs>